Welcome to day 14 part 2 of Kaggle's 30 days of machine learning challenge. Today we are going to see what data leakage is. So to, after today you will get the certificate for intermediate machine learning and we start with the competition soon. So data leakage happens when your training data contains information about the target. So uh, they give an example of uh, you, if you want to predict who will get pneumonia, right? So and if you have a feature that says got uh, took anti antibiotic medicine, which usually happens when after people get pneumonia, uh, you have some kind of leakage of target. So when you split your training data into training and validation sets, you will get a very high score for validation because you have a column which is probably trying to predict your uh, target variable almost perfectly. And that's called target leakage. It's uh, simple to understand. Let's say you have uh, training data and each sample has an ID associated with it, right? As we usually have. And if you include the ID in the while building the model, your model will give you perfect score because it's not learning any other features. It's just learning the ID. And that's what is happening here. So um, uh, it says that to prevent this type of uh, data leakage, any variable updated or created after the target value is realized should be excluded. So we should be we should exclude any data uh, after we uh, that we create after the moment of prediction. If we don't do that, we have a very good result, but uh, that model is useless. Okay, the another thing is strain test contamination. So what happens here if you're running processing like fitting an imputer for missing values before calling train test split, you might get very good results. But again, now your uh, your missing values, the imputation you is using values from test set. And that's wrong, that's incorrect. Your model will perform very good uh, on the validation data, but it won't generalize. So everything that you do, all kinds of processing should only be done after um, you create, after you divide data into training and validation sets. Okay. So now, uh, in this example, you will learn one way to detect and remove target leakage. Okay, let's see. So what's happening here? We use a data set about credit card applications and skip the basic data setup code. Okay, the end result is that information about each credit card application is stored in data frame X. Okay, we will use to will use it to predict which applications were accepted in series Y. Fine. So uh, we have the data and we see which applications were accepted. So this is what the data looks like. Reports, age, income, share, whatever. Eh? Okay, and uh, Y should be just true or false values, a binary classification problem. And we create a pipeline using, this time using random forest classifier, and we calculate cross validation score and we are calculating accuracy. So if I do Y dot value underscore counts it will also tell me how many are true how many are false so probably this for this exact problem accuracy is not a good metric because if you're predicting everything to be true you have a very good accuracy anyways uh, but let's run random forest classifier and see uh, we got an accuracy of 97.9 percent 0.979 so now here they explain you what uh, different columns are and it says that a few variables they look suspicious for example expenditure means expenditure on this card or on cards used bef before applying so now these this column uh, value is filled only after getting the card so if you're using this data to predict who gets the card obviously you're doing something wrong so fraction of those who did not receive a card and had no expenditures 100 percent and fraction of those who received a car and has had no expenditures 0 0.02 so th this means that this um th this column expenditure has some kind of leakage related to the target variable okay so this is how you identify which columns can have leakage and uh, it says as shown above everyone who did not receive a car had no expenditures while only 2% of those who received a card had no expenditures. 
it's not surprising that our models appear to have a very high accuracy. Get it? So, and now it says that other columns like share, uh, it's par partially determined by expenditure and we sh that's, that, that's why we should also exclude that. Active and major cards are a little bit less clear, but from the description, they sound concerning. So what is, wh what is active? Uh, active is the number of credit card accounts, major number of major credit cards held. So these can be also very strong predictors and uh, it's not because of um, because they are really strong predictors because they can but because they have leakage so now our after we remove these columns our accuracy becomes 83 percent which is more reasonable so th that's what is has been explained uh, in uh, this tutorial and it's a it's a very simple con concept to understand one thing that when you when you're building model you have to take care of you fit everything on the training set you evaluate on uh, you transform or predict the validation set and you have to do it inside a cross validation loop. So when you're, you have to split the data, first thing that you do is you split the data, then apply all kinds of processing that you want. Okay. Let's look at our final exercise. Okay. So, uh, Nike has hired you as a data science consultant to help them save money on shoes material. Your assignment is to review a model of, uh, a model one of their employees built to predict how many shoelaces they need each month. So the features are current month, advertising expenditure in previous month, uh, various macroeconomic features like unemployment rate at, as of the beginning of current month, the amount of leather they ended up using in the current month. The results show that model is almost perfectly accurate if you include the feature about how much leather they used. So yeah, if they use more leather, they need more laces, right? But it is only moderately accurate if you leave that feature out. You realize this is because the amount of leather they use is a perfect indicator of how many shoes they produce, uh, which in turn tells you how many shoelaces they need. Yeah, exactly. So do you think leather used feature constitutes a source of data leakage? I think yes. And after you have thought about your answer, you can see. This is tricky and it depends on the details of how data is collected. Would you at the beginning of the month decide how much leather will be used that month? If so, this is okay. But if this is determined during the month and if you don't have access to it, then it it is probably a leakage, right? Uh, if, you, if you have a guess at the beginning of the month and it is subsequently changed during the month, the actual amount used during the month cannot be used as feature because it causes leakage. Okay, so uh, when, when I saw this, my assumption was it's somewhere in the middle of the month. And if it is, um, or at the end of the month, and if it is, it's not a good feature to predict how much, how many laces you will need because it's, it will have uh, very high correlation. So now you have a new idea and uh, you could use the amount of leather Nike order uh, rather than the amount they actually used leading up to a given month as a predictor in the shoelace model. Does this change your answer about whether there's a leakage problem? Okay, um, you could use the amount of leather Nike ordered. So let's see what it says. And here it says this could be fine and uh, it depends on whether they order shoelaces first or leather first. So if they order shoelaces first and you won't know how much leather they have ordered when you predict their shoelace needs. But if they order leather first, then you will have the number available when you place your shoelace order and you should be okay. So if they order leather first, then you have the number available when uh, you place your shoelace order and that's okay because uh, if they order the leather first and uh, you use that value to create a model then you're fine but uh, if if you're ordering leather later it means there's a leakage okay now i, I don't think it makes sense for me to go through uh, any more questions here so let's see this one uh, you you will build a model to predict housing prices okay the model will be deployed on an ongoing basis. That's fine. Um, the size of the house. So you, the features that you have is size of the house, average sale price of homes in the same neighborhood, latitude, longitude, whether the house has a basement. Okay. So you have the historic data to train and validate the model. 
which of these features is most likely to be a uh, most likely to be source of leakage so i i guess it's probably the second one because this value doesn't change this value doesn't change uh, this value may change or may not change but it doesn't depend on the price of neighboring houses but if prices of neighboring houses are going up or up or down it's uh it's very uh, tightly correlated with the house that you're predicting so i guess it's two so let's see and yeah it is correct and now you can read about it i'm not going through this because this exercise is more about understanding so if you if you just read through uh the answers and just check uh if uh, what you think is correct i think you will be done with the exercise and when you're done with the exercise now you can go to the kaggle learn website and here you will see intermediate machine learning and here you can get the certificate so we learned a lot of things in intermediate machine learning in only three days and now it's time to apply this to a real competition so i'm very excited about it um i hope you are too so see you in the competition videos and uh if you like the video do click on the like button do subscribe and tell your friends about it until then goodbye